All right. Okay. So let's now just systematize this a little bit for maybe some of your colleagues who are not able to attend this lecture. So this is the link I was telling you about online learning teaching resources. Okay. Go there. Quick. I'll just run through this quickly. So this will help you to distinguish yourself uh, in comparison to other candidates. Okay. So where's this opening this? Maybe I clicked on a. Yeah, so this is what we want. Yeah, okay, so this is what it opens, right? So what you're really interested in, I put in other links also for online textbooks and other stuff, okay? Uh, but really what you're interested in is the first column, which is online course portals and uh, blue. The sign background is for the ones that I consider very important. So this is an MIT web page. You can go to this page. You can do all the MIT courses. All the course material is there, except that you won't get a certificate. That's okay because knowledge is more important. Okay. It's not so important to have a certificate, but knowledge is more important. There are very important as uh, a very uh, famous MIT introductory computer science course called uh, CS. I think it's called CS 50 or maybe that's the Harvard course, but you can do that. This is also very good. This edX is actually a Harvard uh, MIT collaboration. It's run by an Indian professor. I'll just show you how to use these things. Okay. Uh, very quickly. And then we'll move on to. Uh... All right. So what we do is popular subjects. Let's say you just take computer science. Okay. I'm just saying so you can see you can browse by subject. You can browse online courses by subject. You just go to computer science and you can take uh, whatever okay you can just take any of the you can take uh, microsoft as an introduction to computer science and most of these courses they will give you they will let you audit the course okay which means without uh, the actual uh, i don't know why this display is coming up in such a funny kind of display but they've given you a price also to pay but most of the material actually here should be uh, free to access okay you can audit the course but uh, if you want to pay that's optional okay so you can find those courses look for those courses which you can op audit okay so as everyone understands understood how to use this stuff okay go there and explore I've given you all the links okay so you can explore that I'm just shutting it but again you'll find the hyperlink here itself you can directly click here so I'll just show you my YouTube channel quickly how to navigate and uh, and I've given you also here if you are exploring the finance courses okay explore in this sequence okay explore in the sequence I've given you because the material that we cover is actually we don't cover them as discrete courses we cover them as one body of material so if you start with FDRM you'll get confused because it's more advanced material so use this uh, sequence that I've recommended here so if you go here you can see the channel uh, you can see this one of the things I would recommend is you go to mi miscellaneous lectures okay where I have a lot of information also along the lines of this kind of stuff okay these are some le lectures I've given on this particular topic you can see that if you want to but some of these I would recommend you try and look at this one okay these are some general guidance because you need to follow a lot of business news okay you need to be other, the other thing that you need to do for uh, throughout your MBA uh, throughout your career in business is very be very plugged into what's going on in the world of business all the news that's coming out you should be absorbing news at a phenomenal pace every day right so here in these videos I've given you a lot of guidance on how you can track markets how to uh, tracking markets and news so I would recommend you watch these videos okay go there and watch these videos and these are some of the other things that we have presented here and there but these three are the most important I would say this one this one this one and you can also look at this one as general guidance okay the other thing I would also recommend you look at is in my legal aspects of business course because this is my first introduction here there are actually a very few videos because uh, this course is coming up and I've hidden some of the videos where I have actually explained some of the judgments okay so this course I don't want the upcoming batch to see the right answer in law there's always the right answer okay it's not like a management case so I've hidden some of the videos so this has only 11 videos actually there are 26 videos for this course okay so I would recommend that you go to the legal aspects of business course and also look at this particular video on personal effect but this is the first time I get exposure to the full first year batch. So I use the first class in this course to talk about personal effectiveness. Okay, you know what personal effectiveness is? Like kind of being more effective, like you know sports psychology? 
you heard of sports psychology, right? So like the fact that uh, Sindhu has won this time, but last two times she failed. Some of this could be also due to the way she is thinking while playing the big points. What is she telling herself in her own mind, right? So those kind of things are addressed by sports psychology. So some of those types of issues and how to be more effective based on your own, uh, based on your current set of talents, how to be more effective. These kind of things are addressed over here. Uh, you can just look at that. I would recommend you look at that. You might get some ideas from there. Okay, so this is some in the major. Uh, this is some material I just wanted to share with you guys in in, in uh, as general uh, material. Okay, and this is your spreadsheet link. If you have any academic queries, you can email me there. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll go on to the uh, actual. All right, so you can see here, if we looked at that, uh, I'll just give you an example. We tried to sell those HCFC shares, right? I gave an order to sell 800 HCFC share. You can see how many uh, transactions it had to do to complete selling 800 shares, okay? So this software gives you the full breakdown of this. So we'll just... Uh, let, uh, hope I don't end up... We can close this. Okay, so let's just give you a basic introduction to markets. Is everyone following what I'm saying? Am I going too fast? Are you able to follow what I'm saying? Okay. In any case, now all this stuff is being recorded, so you can always replay it. Okay, so let's look at some of the mark. So the way we want to define, okay, let me just show you something here first. Um, why am I teaching you in general, uh, in terms of general principles and not uh, purely on stock markets? Okay. Uh, let me show you why uh, why I have that perspective and what I think is the right way to look at why is that uh, violet light coming there is it from the projector or somewhere you notice there's a violet line under asset classes I don't know why that's coming anyway it because it's not on my uh, PC here anyway okay so let's look at this let me just give you a broad understanding since you're you're you all from a commerce background you'll have some understanding but try to look at this thing this framework here okay uh, I'll just cover this a little bit yeah so we can understand this so this framework so this is why I don't teach purely from a stock market perspective because I think it'll give students a wrong perspective uh, there are certain jet all markets are the same in many many ways markets are the same there are certain unique features of stock markets okay but in general there are many aspects of markets which are uniform across all the asset classes okay so when you talk about asset classes these are the main as I already told you this is the these are all the main asset classes now fifth uh, real estate has emerged as a major asset class after the recession okay and sometimes you might hear credit being spoken of as a separate asset class but actually I can I include credit within uh, this asset class called debt okay I don't call it bonds because uh, all debt uh, is not bonds okay bonds is typically that we report when we use the word bond what we refer to is something which carries a coupon you know the distinction between bond markets and money markets right so in money markets we say these instruments don't have coupons and the initial maturity of the instruments is less than one year less than equal to one year so that's why you have the government of india issues 365 day treasury bills those are money market instruments and they have these two characteristics they are initial maturity is less than one year and the instruments do not carry coupons these are zero coupon instruments you know that treasury bills are issued at a discount the face value you know all that stuff right so these are called money market instruments so we make a distinction between bond markets and money markets in bond markets the initial maturity is greater than one year and the instruments carry coupons so that's why I don't use many people say stocks and bonds uh, the stocks part is okay but it's better to use the word debt because strictly speaking uh, money market instruments are not bonds so if you use the word bonds that's too restrictive a term you're not covering money market instruments which should also be covered under the category of debt because that's also the yeah no that's a very good question excellent question because she's actually pointing out a flaw in the way that I have defined the uh, so I, and again I would say anybody has a question please ask okay so I didn't say this earlier but very good that she asked the question so she's asked a very good question because I distinguish between money market instruments and bond market instruments by saying that uh, bond markets uh, they, are, they have coupons and uh, money market instruments don't have coupons so she's actually pointing out something which is actually a 
bond market instrument, which is a zero coupon bond. Okay, so she actually, uh, so this is a very good example that she has given because this is actually uh, an anomaly. It's not fitting the definition. Okay, it's actually a bond market instrument, zero coupon bonds. These are bond market instruments, uh, but they are uh, issued without a coupon. So the only good thing for us, uh, which can help us to save the distinguishing uh, the, the rules of distinction, is that these are very rare. Okay, so the way that zero coupon bonds come into existence in the market okay, is as original issue zero coupon bonds. These are quite rare. Okay, well, you will not find many issuers issuing zero coupon bonds. Okay, the way these zero coupon bank bonds come into existence is, have you heard this uh, term called strip, uh, treasury strips? STRI. There's something called. Uh, let's just since we are discussing this, uh, let me just try to also put it into the. It's not in the exact sequence that we wanted. Okay. But let me just, uh, okay, uh, I understand what happened because the problem, this is the problem with Chrome. In Chrome, if you, uh, you know, make the zoom smaller, the, the, all the tabs become smaller. Whereas in Firefox, you can do it tab by tab. So this is one of the problems of Chrome, although it's much faster than Firefox. Uh, can everyone read at the back, last bench? Can you read the stuff? Uh, markets facilitate the exchange you can read this stuff okay great so let me try and just write it here itself when we are um, discussing this okay so so that again you'll have access to all this as you'll see all this going on because visually is always uh, important here to see money markets all right so no coupon And initial maturity is um, less than equal to one year okay and this is obviously the op opposite okay so I'm not writing this part so uh, her example now zero coupon bonds actually these are bond market instruments but there's something here called uh, this is most common in the US Treasury market there is something called you can look it up later on you can go to the US Treasury website and look up there's something called treasury strips the strip stands for okay separate I'm not going to write it here to take too long but the strip stands for because the video is recorded so it stands for separate treatment of uh, interest and principal securities okay so this stands for separate treatment of interest this is a legal it required a legal change so what they do is they buy uh, coupon bonds from the US Treasury okay so you're buying a coupon bond let's say a 30-year bond which has coupons semi-annual coupons okay so you get 60 coupons and then uh, what they do is they trade those coupons separately all those coupons are separated from the uh, bond itself their bond is disaggregated into all the coupons and the principal payment and maturity so that's how you then get Great zero coupon bonds in the US Treasury market, which is where this is most commonly seen. But your question is very good. That actually points uh, points to a problem in the way we have distinguished between my markets and bond markets. So the way to reconcile that is that zero coupon bond issuance is quite rare as a primary market issuance, and then it basically gets created from coupon securities by stripping out the interest in principle. Okay. All right. So uh, so this is why I was trying to. Uh, so what I was trying to show you is this. So this is actually according to me the right way to look at markets because you want to learn about global markets in general okay uh, you have the full perspective so uh, the way I've classified it is you have asset classes here okay you have instruments here so an asset class as I said is just a group of markets that move together okay are you following so far what we are saying okay and uh, this these are actually instruments these are different types of instruments so sometimes you'll see people saying stocks bonds options and futures that's not actually the right way to look at it because stocks and bonds are actually asset classes whereas uh, options and futures are instruments so it's a bit it's a little bit like saying Japanese Germans plumbers and dentists because some of the plumbers could be Japanese some of the dentists could be German so this is not a good way to classify things so this is way, the right way to look at it according to me is to look at asset classes on one side and you have instruments on the other side okay and in between you have markets okay so let's think about this example let's take the example let's go back since we were told, told to talk about stock markets let's go back to the Indian stock market as an example okay so you see I've just given you a few of these uh, charts and by the way you can chart this let me just show you the 
chart link so that you'll pick it up through the video you can if you're interested in charts you can actually make just create a login for yourself you'll be able to see the the URL over here okay you can just go there and create a chart link uh, this is a pretty good charting system for uh, Indian equities for Indian equities I would recommend you use money controls for the long-term charts okay and you use uh, this kind of software because these guys are very good intraday charts okay so you can see here let's look at uh, this example which we have been following so if we just enter TCS just make sure that when you're entering data this all is selected okay because if you have selected this and you're entering TCS this will not come up okay make sure that you have selected all are you following how to use this chart you can set up a login here is everyone comfortable with the use of charts you have some idea what we have. there's actually a lot of technical material that you can learn about charts but you can learn that if we go if you go through my initial lectures at IPM that course that you have on my page you can learn that there so we just select data consultancy we can see that this has a very long uptrend going on this is a four hour chart all right you can see the long uptrend in TCS so we were actually buying this stuff so here what we have done is we have actually bought TCS we have bought some shares of TCS okay which are still there and you can see the uh, the uh, the prices for the stock okay so you can see this here so these are some of the examples of Indian uh, equities okay uh, all right okay so uh, so let me give you an example of how to use this framework okay so we were looking at some Indian equity markets right we we, we basically define a market as any uh, and a, a venue for exchanging two assets so if you look at we are going to call each of these a market okay we're going to call each of these a market so Maruti is a market the market for Maruti shares the market for TCS shares the market for ITC Infosys HDFC etc okay and so the way you use this framework is we we'll just try and get an overall uh, view of the, the way you're supposed to use this framework is this so we were looking at Indian uh, common stocks okay that is equity shares what we in India call equity shares in the US they call it common stocks okay so we are looking at common stocks so is everyone clear that this goes into the equities row right it has to go into the equities row and these instruments are trading on a spot basis these are not these prices that we see these are not option prices these are spot trading prices okay which means the settlement here will be on a T plus 2 basis which means if today is your transaction day the settlement has to be done within two days okay so basically after two days all right so this is a settlement uh, this is called spot settlement okay so spot is one of the types of instruments so these so therefore this goes into the equities row these Indian uh, stock prices that we are looking at they go into the equities row and they go into which column they don't go in here they don't go in here not here not here but they go into this column okay so this is how you use this framework okay you put this in this column and what is this row act what does this cell actually show you okay if you look at the cell I've actually um, should not have um, this merging actually should not have been done let me just why is it showing us okay so somehow this has been merged I'll just I don't know I'm not able to unmerge it but let's just focus on this you see where my cursor is okay so why am I calling this framework asset classes markets and instruments you want to show asset classes you want to show instruments okay now where are the markets the way you think about the markets in this framework is in this cell where my cursor is right now you try to imagine that you're blowing up the cell making it very big okay inside that cell you have the equity markets the spot equity markets of all the countries and most of the countries when you're looking at Japanese stocks or US stocks everything is trading on a spot basis they have options also but mainly the uh, equity markets when they are talking about the decay going down or the Dow Jones going down those are markets trading on a spot basis okay so inside this cell imagine that you find within this cell all the stock markets of all the major countries it's 10 minutes okay right so uh, so inside the cell you have the stock markets of all the major countries the spot stock markets so imagine this is split up into different boxes India US Japan 
Canada, etc. And then you look inside the Indian box. Now inside the Indian box you find all the Indian shares, okay? Here in this particular, uh, we have only listed about five shares. But you think of all the other listed stocks on both NSE and BSE in India, okay? All the common stock price uh, stocks that are traded in India, all of them will be inside that Indian box. Is this clear? And each of this, each of these things is a market, okay? So we, we I'll just come to the definition of a market, but I'm just giving you a preview right now. That uh, you think of each of these as a market. As I said, market for Maruti stock, market for TCS stock. Okay, so that's why we say asset classes, markets, and instruments. Are you able to follow now? Okay, asset class instrument intersection in that box. You have all the spot equity markets globally. Think of each country having a box. Go into the Indian box. You imagine in that Indian box all the shares of Indian companies which are listed and traded. And then I've shown you only about five of those as uh, you can see live prices because I haven't called up the other prices. Okay, we can just add other prices if you want to add you can just insert uh, maybe here we can just insert some Okay, okay if, I, if I wanted to add let's say Airtel The query is in progress. It's a little bit maybe my desktop. Yeah, so you can see here what I really want is uh, it's giving me all kinds of. So what I'm really interested in is actually stock, but not Airtel's. Um, yeah, this is what I want. Okay, and it'll give me an option of here. This is what I want. Airtel Limited on the NSE. I don't want the futures. I don't want the options. I want the stock. And then it'll show you the prices of Airtel as well. These are all live prices. Okay, so this is how you can you can imagine calling up, going through the entire list of Indian stocks and calling them up. You can see the live prices. Okay, so now why am I? Uh, so far, everyone is following. Okay, asset classes, markets, and instruments is where you use the framework. Now, why did I say each of these is a market? Because we are defining a market in this way. I'll just try to refer to the. A short question here. Okay, so what we are saying is the definition we have to have a good theoretical definition of markets. Okay, so we're defining markets in general as a as a venue for facilitating the exchange of goods and services for money. But within finance, we are interested only in the exchange of goods for money. Okay, so in finance, we are going to use uh, in finance, we'll say for the sake of finance. Uh, we are going to define markets as a venue for the exchange of assets okay so each market is a venue for the exchange of assets we are using a general term like assets okay instead of using currencies because remember uh, if you go back to this framework okay these are all asset classes so when we use assets as a general term what we mean is that currencies are an asset commodities are an asset debt is an asset equities are an asset okay real estate is an asset everything is an asset okay it's a general term all right okay so uh, so therefore we use the general term we say that a market is a venue for the exchange of assets okay so now if you go back to the indian market example here okay so we say that a market is a venue for the exchange of assets so we say the market for maruti shares okay so in the market for maruti shares can you tell me what are the assets that are being exchanged this definition is clear to everybody we are always trying to pin things down by giving very tight definitions okay and uh, put uh, she gets she asked a very good question where she was poking a hole in the definition that we gave and it's a correct criticism actually because it's a shortcoming in the definition so uh, but we always want to be able to define things in a very precise way okay so we define markets as a very for the exchange so in Maruti what are the two ass assets we are exchanging shares shares of what shares of HDFC yes. shares of Maruti right yeah and no, no, no. In this market, 60, 6093, 6095, that you can see the price, everyone can see the price. There's a market trading there live. Okay, we are saying a market is a venue for the exchange of assets. The definition is clear. Okay, she's got one asset correct. She's saying this is one asset is the common shares of Maruti. Okay, what is the other asset? Money. Money, can you be more specific? Cash. Cash. Can you be more specific? Is it what Canadian dollars? 
Indian, Indian rupees. Indian rupees. That's the answer I was looking for. Okay? Because Canadian dollar is also money. Japanese yen is also money. But this price, is it in Japanese yen? It's in Indian rupees. Alright? So if you want to buy, you have to pay 1692. Now it's 92. This is the offer side. If you want to buy, these are the market makers' prices. If you want to buy, you have to buy at the higher price, which is the offer or the ask. So this is what you pay if you want to buy. If you want to sell, you have to. You will get only this much. Okay. So we'll come to this. But the first thing, let's get the concept clear. So we are using the equity markets to illustrate the definition of a market. Okay. So in every market, you will be looking out for what are the two assets involved in this market. As she correctly pointed out, that one asset is the common shares of Maruti, and the other asset is Indian rupees. Okay. All right. So obviously here we are not going to waste time going through here all obviously this is common shares of HDFC and Indian rupees okay in all these uh, all these markets Indian rupees is obviously one of the assets okay so the other term that we want to learn okay we'll try to learn we are obviously going to have a truncated session okay because we don't have time so what, what I suggest you do is later on you can go and look at all the lectures there are very long lectures where everything is covered in a proper sequence you can read it uh, you can follow it there but we'll try to cover whatever we can in this limited time that we have okay so the other thing that we want to define is is um, we have already defined this financial markets are venues to exchange assets okay this is the first definition that we have okay the other two terms you want to learn is base asset and terms asset okay we are going to now introduce uh, two terms base asset and terms asset we first learned that a market is a venue for exchange of assets okay base asset and terms asset we borrow these terms from the currency markets okay uh, we are borrowing these terms from the currency markets where we use the terms base currency and terms currency okay uh, but we are going to use it in a general sense and apply it to all markets it's another example of how we always try to what two minutes okay 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 so i'm <laughs> i'm being wired okay i'll just i'll just uh, give you one more concept and then we'll wrap up okay so the base asset and the terms asset we try to understand this concept then we'll wrap up okay so what is a base asset in every market the base asset think of a base a base is something that has a sense of being fixed and in unvarying uh, unvarying uh, kind of sense right fixed so here if you look at once again if you look at the price of maruti this is 6085 or let's look at the price of tcs because i have the chart already okay so it's 2240 roughly now so if you go to the chart of tcs now at one time it was around 1137 you can follow the cursor over there okay 1122 roughly and then it has moved up all this variation in all this variation what is not changing is that one share of tcs that part is not changing right two two assets are being exchanged one is the common shares of tcs one is indian rupees okay but you see variation on this chart so what is not changing is that the one share of PCS part is not changing. Okay, yesterday, uh, that day it used to cost 1200. One time it used to be 1200. Now it is 2000 something, right? 2240. So what is changing is what? How many rupees are required to buy that one share of PCS? Okay. So we say here that because the base is not changing, so here we say that the asset, the base asset, is the common share of PCS. Okay. And the other one we call it a terms asset. Okay. There's only two assets. So the other one is called the terms asset. Why do we call it a terms asset? Because one share of TCS is being priced in terms of Indian rupees. We could have also priced it theoretically. There's nothing stopping us from pricing it in terms of US dollars. We can just use the dollar against rupee exchange rate and convert it into US dollars. But in this market, it's trading in terms of Indian rupees. Okay. So is this clear? The language is clear. Okay. So that's why we call this a terms asset. So in every market you look at, okay, there will always be a base asset and a terms asset. Okay. So here example you can see is all basically, these are all here. The base asset is shares of Infosys and the terms asset is Indian rupees. This is clear. Okay. If you look at some of the other assets, I'll just give you a quick wrap up, wrap up so we have uh, 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 you know transmission to the other asset classes this is actually crude oil okay this is crude oil with one of the most important contracts in the world 56 53 54 what is this in this market what is the base asset we'll just do one example to to uh, you know give you a sense of what how to pra practice this what is in the crude oil market can you see this price 
light sweat, uh, this is a North American crude oil benchmark. The price is showing as 353.54. The data is slightly delayed because this is a different login for us. So 53.54, it's about 15 minutes delay. So what is this? Everyone can see this? Now, what is this 56, 53? Let's, let's just look at the right side because it's, it's so tight. We don't want to look at two tight prices all the time. So let's look at this 53 on the right hand side. What is that 56? 53 here, what are the what are the two assets in this market? One is crude oil and what is the other? Indian rupees. It's not Indian rupees. Where, in which currency do you think the international crude oil market trades? US dollars. Okay. So here, this price is actually telling you one barrel of light sweet crude oil is 56.52 roughly. Okay. So that's 56.52 US dollars for one barrel of crude oil. You have to know the unit. Okay. That's a matter of context. Okay. You have to know that the unit is your one barrel and it's actually an American barrel. There's a different kind of bar other barrels also. So one American barrel of crude oil is 56.52 US dollars. Okay. So here the base asset is crude oil and the terms asset is US dollars because one barrel of crude oil that will never change this price keeps fluctuating what is fluctuating number of US dollars required to buy one barrel of crude oil so the terms asset is US dollars and the base asset is crude oil okay similarly here gold this is gold the base asset is gold this price is in US dollars okay this is uh, COMEX gold okay and this is again in US dollars okay so this is I think so I'll just wrap up here because I'm out of time okay so what I'll do is I'll stop the recording here okay so we have at least have 31 minutes of recording